when I was a uh, freshman in high school, my mom left with this guy that he's a sex offender is how I mildly put it. My dad was kind of mean and rough. He beat me quite hard. I was not learning any relationship skills at home. So I would seek out boyfriends everywhere. I was up in my bedroom um, ready to commit suicide. And I had, um, I would say my first Jesus encounter. And he said, no, Marge, don't do that. You go outside and go for a walk. Something good's happening. So I finally, I said, Jane, take me to church. So that was radically, I mean, I, the light switched on. And not only that, so I went home and I had this Bible that Jane had given me. And I opened up John and I started reading it. And I'm going, oh, how did I miss what it was saying here? And it's like the eyes of my understanding were now open. It was so amazing. And I go, oh my gosh, I have everlasting life now. Hi, I'm Margie Lillig. Um, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, I've been divorced. My parents have been divorced. Uh, and I have two children, two daughters with cystic fibrosis. And now I have three grandchildren, I'd say, after the order of Naomi in the Book of Ruth. And uh, what did you place your hope in prior to knowing Jesus? Um, I was raised Catholic. So I think my hope was in the Catholic Church. However, the, the Catholic Church is really guilt-based. So I felt very guilty all the time. Like I can never measure up and I can never achieve enough. What did you feel guilty for? Sins, mortal sins. I mean, they, you know, name it. <laughs> well, let's say you're supposed to go to confession and there was a couple. Now, this is later on, um, like high school, let's put it this way. Um, there were a couple sins that I just wouldn't even tell the priest. I would uh, I don't just say, oh, and I lied <laughs> to cover the ones I can say. Um, but uh, I remember, though, taking a step back when I was like five. My mom had five kids, bang, 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 and then divorce came and there were another. But I was five, so I was pretty much on my own. And the Catholic Church was like a block away. And I walked in and I went to the altar and I kneeled down. And there's a larger than life picture or a statue of Jesus up front. And I remember looking up and I said, why did you have to do that at five or four? I don't remember exactly. And that prayer got answered when I was 18. Because, you know, in the Catholic Church, you don't believe Jesus died for all your sins. You believe he just died for the original sin, which was the sin that Adam and Eve committed. So that's why you're working for your salvation. And so, but, you know, you go to confession and you confess your sins and then you can go to heaven again. But I was in a sad state because I didn't want to tell him what some of my sins were. When did you first start to experience uh, Jesus pursuing you and stirring in your heart? That would be when I was four. And then I had, you know, and I had that experience. Um, I had a cousin that said, you know, you just don't believe the way we believe, you know, and all these things pop into your head when you finally do get saved. So there were little things that led me there. But I first had to go through the slew of this bond before I got there. Um, when I was eight, when I was a uh, freshman in high school, my mom left with the neighbor. My dad was kind of mean and rough. Um, and he gave, well, that's where my spirit of timidity came in. He uh, asked me to do something, and I said, can you wait a minute? I, I want to finish what I'm doing. And he said no, and he, uh, he beat me quite hard. And then when I cried, he said, if you don't stop crying, I will beat you again. Um, so I stopped crying at that point, and my voice just shut up too. So that's when, but I have overcome that and my dad got saved. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's a happy ending. I don't want to leave it there. Um, then, uh, okay, so my mom left with this guy that, he's a sex offender is how I mildly put it. He was a 
pretty bad sex offender. Um, and I just didn't get it. Why would you leave our dad, leave us with our dad and go with that guy? Um, anyway, so I didn't see her for another four years. And when she finally called, I didn't even recognize her voice. That was interesting. Um, so, and then my, my dad married my stepmom, which we thought she would be nice, but, um, the minute they got married, she turned a little, uh, crabby, <laughs> trying to think of another word. She, uh, she was not nice. She made my dad seem nice. I guess that was it. She kind of whipped him into shape. I guess that was a good thing about that. And she got saved at the end, too. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so, yeah. And then my, my middle brother got cancer and died. And I couldn't be at home. The, the relationship, I was not learning any relationship skills at home. Um, so I would seek out boyfriends everywhere to find the love I wasn't getting at home anywhere else I could find it. And that usually led to pretty much destruction. So as soon as I could, and a lot of my siblings too, I wasn't in this alone, left the house. I got a job, I left. Um, but at this job, right out of high school, there was a lady there. And I watched her. And she never said cuss words. And mind you, I had bad cuss words because I was very bitter, very bitter. I had cuss words in every sentence in in the office setting. It was hard to uncuss me. Um, and she had was not only no cuss words, but gracious speech. I mean, there was just a beauty about her speech. And her mom worked there with her. And watching their relationship was like, whoa, what is this? You know, so you you just your testimony of uh, living out the love of Jesus. People are watching you, so do it. And she would uh, invite me out to church and invite me out and invite me out. And I would, you know, turn her down because I thought it, you know, I was thinking it was like, powerless Catholic um, and I didn't realize that there were other churches out there I didn't I had no knowledge of that because I was isolated into uh, that mode of thinking I didn't know there could be more so finally I had another setback with a guy that I was you know on my whole load was based on um, and I was up in my bedroom um, ready to commit suicide. And I had, um, I would say, my first Jesus encounter. And he said, no, Marge, don't do that. You go outside and go for a walk. Something good's happening. And uh, so I finally, I said, Jane, take me to church. Oops, that's her name, Jane. <laughs> um, so she took me. She goes, okay, we're having these special children's classes. I'll take you to that. And mind you, I'm 18. So, and I, you know, I went to those classes and he goes, Gina, yeah, I didn't understand a thing. You know, and it was just basic um, Bible stories, you know, the Good Samaritan and stuff. I just, just um, and I had tried to read the Bible before I got saved. It was just like flatline. I could not figure it out. So she sat me with the preacher afterwards, and he went to me. He goes, are you going to heaven or hell? And I said, well, I'm going to hell, you know, because, you know, I'm, in, I'm thinking Catholic. I'm going, I did those mortal sins, and I'm refusing to confess them. I'm going to hell. And he read me John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not but have everlasting life. And he read that. And he and I went, and then he go, are you going to heaven or hell? And I'm going, hell. And he read it again. And that went on for about 10 times and he lost his temper. <laughs> I ring the best out. And he goes, are you calling God a liar? 
and the light switch came on and I went, that's written in the Bible? And I go, oh my gosh, I have everlasting life now. <laughs> so that was radically, I mean, I, the light switched on and not only that, so I went home and I had this Bible that Jane had given me and I opened up John, the Gospel of John, who does that on their own, uh, and I started reading it and I'm going, oh, how did I miss what it was saying here? How did I miss that? And it's like the eyes of my understanding were now open. It was so amazing. How, in that moment when you were on the verge of suicide, how did you know that that was Jesus speaking to you and asking you to go for a walk? Ooh, good question. Um, darn it. I guess it was the feeling of good. Um, you know, it would have been Satan if he said, go ahead and do it, go ahead and give it, you know, but it, it was, it was right. Yeah. Well, and it says that if you're not, I mean, I, I wanted to do right and good. I just didn't know where I was going. I was lost. Mm. So when you met him in that experience and really met Jesus for the first time, what would you say was so compelling about him? I, I knew why he died on the cross. I knew why such an extreme event had to happen. Um, I was so appreciative. Um, I guess I fell in love right away. And, and, and the root of that love got me through everything else. It was, it was deeply rooted into me. I think the deeper your salvation experience, the better your life, the, the better the foundation of the rest of your life will be. And I, de I got deeply rooted. But um, there were so many things that he had to work with all my life. Um, I had, you know, I had to work out the timidity stuff. I had no confidence also. He had to show me, you know, I am a superhero. I am, you know, not the grasshopper. I am an overcomer. Um, so, yeah, I am not a doormat. I am the bride of Christ. Yes, he had a lot to work with. <laughs> How would you define your identity has changed since saying yes to Jesus? I am the bride of Christ. I am. My words matter. Um, and I have valuable words. Um, and I can help people overcome them. How does your relationship with Jesus affect your life now? It is everything. Um, I mean, what's the purpose of living without him? He is life. He is the light of the world. He is life. The creator of all. I mean, we have to line up with him. Life is lining up with him and becoming as close to him as possible here on earth. That's beautiful. Thank you, Margie, for sharing. Last question. Who is Jesus to you? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Um, he's the one that I cling to and I depend on. And he's so good.